I'm always doing that. That must be like the sixth mug I've broken this year alone. When they're made out of this hard stuff, they break easily when you drop them. Hmm. The mugs in my house are made out of a plastic sort of stuff. Ours too. I've never really noticed what ours are made of. Yeah, Craig, and I bet you never help wash the dishes in your house either. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I'm too busy playing sports. You're right. <laughs> what, what? What are they saying? Are they going to wash the dishes for Chef? Huh? Wow! They're very helpful, kind kids. No one in my family helped with the dishes. My mom was always complaining, but it's a shame Chef Jeff dropped that mug. It was the same color as my banana. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I suppose I need to buy new mugs for the cafe anyway. I just don't know what kind to get. What are the choices? Well, there's this type, that's melamine, and then there's this type, that's ceramic, and then we have this type, that's enamel, and I suppose I should look at this type too, that's polystyrene. The good thing about that one is that it's really cheap, and you don't have to wash them, you can just throw them away. Yeah. But that's not good for the environment. Think about all those cups is away, piling up somewhere. You should always try to use things over and over. True. I tell you what, let's do some scientific testing on these mugs and find out which one is the best. Hmm? Scientific? Oh, yes, we're going to look at these mugs as scientists would. Analyze each of them and find out which one is the best. Oh, good. First, we need to look at the materials. What do you mean by materials? Okay, um... Okay. We are all made of matter. Well, that's a scientific word for stuff. <laughs> All things, living and not living, are made of matter. Even absolutely tiny things like germs are made of matter. And so is the air, although we can't see it. Can we make this matter we're made of? Some matter is found naturally and some is created by people or other creatures. Like? Well... Gabby's hair is matter, and it's absolutely natural. She didn't buy it. Oh, did you, Gabby? No, it's all mine. But some people have hair extensions, which are not made out of natural hair. And stones and trees are made of matter, and they exist in the natural world. But some things don't appear naturally. They may. Uh, like the spoon. Hmm? It didn't just grow on a tree. Someone had to make it. Now, when we make things or manufacture them, we have a choice of where to find the materials to manufacture with. Does anyone know what that choice is? Mm, you could choose between things that are natural or things that are just made. Exactly. So if I wanted to make paper, I would take a natural product and process it or, or work on it. So what natural product would I be using when I make paper? Wood. Yes. Wood is generally processed to make paper. Or I could create a material like, a, like polystyrene. That's man-made and doesn't exist naturally. So we call it synthetic. So synthetic means man-made? Yes. Now all things, both man-made and natural, are made up of different materials. When you look at the spoon, you see this round part is made of metal and the handle is made of plastic. So they've used the materials, metal and plastic, to make this. And why would they choose to use one type of material instead of another? For example, why would they use plastic on the spoon handle? Well, all materials have different properties. Uh, we decide to use a particular material because it has the properties that are well suited to what we need to do. Like the spoon handle, what properties would it need? Well, it shouldn't break easily, especially if you're using it to stir something thick. <laughs> That's right. So you, the spoon handle must be very strong. And it can't melt, because sometimes if you leave it on the side of a pot, it could melt. Yes. So the plastic needs to be made so that it doesn't melt when it touches something hot. 
So, do you all know what properties are? This kind of plastic doesn't break and doesn't melt, so it's good to use on a spoon. <laughs> good. Yeah, Mavin. Yeah, boy, Mavin. Well, I put the milk outside to get warm, like you said. Ah, thank you. I like milk that's been made warm by the sun. Hmm. I think you're mad, though. Hmm? Yeah. I like it really cold out of the freezer. Ah, that makes my teeth hurt. Hmm. Why? Well, because it's cold. It makes my teeth hurt. Oh. Hmm. How long ago did you put the milk out in the sun? Ah, uh, it's about, uh, yeah. About an hour ago. Oh, good, good. Mm -hmm. I'll have it when I come back from visiting Auntie Mooney. Mm. Yeah, I must just find my uh, hat. Uh, did, did you see? Did you see my hat? Your hat? Yeah, my hat. Yeah, yes, I've seen it. It's uh, the white one with the little holes uh, in the side for air, right? That's right. Yeah. Mm. Have, you, have you seen it? Yeah, actually, I have. Yes, and. <laughs> Well, you see, we ran out of tissues and I knew you wanted the milk, so I sort of used your head to put the milk in. <laughs> right, so you've all got your mugs, and how's that hot chocolate? Mmm, yummy. <laughs> Can we be scientists and investigate the mugs now? Okay, so first we need to draw a chart on the menu board. Gabby, will you? Okay, we need to draw five columns, and on the top of the first column, you need to write questions. Okay. Right, Craig, what type is yours? It's some sort of label with paint on it. Good. It's what we call an enamel mug because it's got enamel painted on the metal. So, Gabby, write metal in the second column. Craig, do you know why they painted with enamel on the mug? So it looks pretty? Probably, but there's another reason why you'd paint a metal mug that's going to hold liquids in it. Oh, so it doesn't rust when it gets wet. <laughs> yes. So, Mbali, what type is yours? I think it's hard clay. Yes, it's clay that's baked in the oven until it's really hard. And then they paint this glazed surface over the top. This material is called ceramic. So, Gabby, write in the third column, ceramic, that's C-E-R... A-M... <laughs> I see. Good. Now, Lauren, what's yours? Mine's some sort of plastic. Yes. It's a very hard plastic that we call melamine. Uh, OK, so that's spelled M-E-L... A-M... I-N-E. <laughs> Good. And then there's your cup, uh, Gabby. That's polystyrene. We spell polystyrene P O L Y S T Y R E N E. Okay. So now we've got our chart, and now what we need to do is decide what questions we need to ask to find out which mug is the best. So what do you think we should ask? Is it waterproof? Yes, good one. And what else? Right, waterproof over there. Oh, careful, lovey. Stand up again. Okay, waterproof. Okay, and what else? How about if it's heavy or light? Yeah. You don't want to pick up something that's too heavy, like it's made of stone. It would be too hard to pick up. Yes, we need to know that it will keep liquids hot. Uh, we don't want to burn our hands when we pick it up with something hot in it. It needs to be a good insulator. Okay, Gabby, write insulate. That's I-N-S-U-L-A-T. Insulate. 
So it needs to keep the heat on the inside. And we can ask if the material will break easily. It should be strong. Good. So write strong. Good. I think that's enough questions for us to decide which is the most suitable mug. Thanks, Gabby. Now, all of you, take a look at your mugs. Now, Craig, you're first. You've got a metal mug that's covered in enamel. Now, I'm going to score them from one to three, with one being the lowest and three being the highest. So, Craig, what would you score your mug for... Oh, what's the first question? Oh, for waterproof. How waterproof is your mug? I think the metal mug would get three. Yes. Metal is definitely waterproof, so let's give it a three. And Mbali? I've got the ceramic mug. <laughs> Actually, it's pronounced ceramic. Okay, I've got the ceramic mug, and I think it would also get three. Yes, and you see that shiny glazed surface on the top? Well, that's made from a material that's like glass. It would definitely keep the liquid in. Cool, so let's give it three. And Lauren? Mine's plastic, and it's definitely waterproof. Cool, I wouldn't disagree with you, so it gets a three. Here, uh, Gabby? I think mine's waterproof, but I'd give it a two. You know, sometimes when you use these mugs, the hot chocolate stains the sides of the cup. What does that mean? Well, that's because the hot chocolate sinks into the material. So you're right to give it only two. Okay. Now, those are the scores so far. So let's carry on and move on to the next question. Is it light? Mine's not heavy, but it's not as light as the others. Let's give it a two. A two, great. Okay, and Betty? This is heavier than the others. I'd give it one out of three. One out of three, okay. And Lauren? No, this is light, so it deserves a three. Okay, I'll go with that. Three. And Gabby? This is very, very light. I think I give this a three. A three. Okay. Now, just Okay. So now we need to know if we can put hot things in it. We need to keep tea or coffee warm in it, but we need to be able to hold it with our hands. You don't want to burn your hands or your lips, right? One, I think. Metal gets hot quite easily, and then it's difficult to hold. Aina. <laughs> right. So let's give it a one. Metal is not a good insulator. Right, Mbali? This is, oh, you know this is made out of clay. It seems to work better than metal. Right. But something to remember is that when it's made very cold and then very hot, it cracks. But that's cool. Let's still give it three. And Lauren? This plastic holds very hot water without you even feeling it. So, three. Three. All right then, Gabby? I think I'd give this a two. You know, sometimes when you have a very hot drink in one of these mugs, it burns your hands. It's very thin. All right, so we're giving it a two. All right, there we go. And now the next question, is it strong? Three, this is tough. All right, three, Mbali? This is almost the same as the one you broke, so I'd say one. One. Lauren? This plastic won't break easily, so I'd give it a three. And this polystyrene breaks very easily. I could easily burn myself, so one. One. Right, so let's just add up these scores. Got a nine for metal. And an eight for ceramic. Ceramic, hey. And melamine gets a six, nine, twelve. And polystyrene gets two, five, six, seven, eight. 
All right, so have a look at that. I think melamine gets the vote, hey? Eh? It's waterproof, it's very light, it's a good insulator, and it's strong. So I wonder how much these melamine mugs cost, huh? What colour do you think I should get? Blue. No, red. My favourite is pink. How about green? <laughs> well, I'll get a whole lot of different colours to keep everyone happy. to help Chef Jeff do the dishes. They were helping him to decide what kind of marks are the best to use because they are waterproof or light or won't break. They investigated the marks like proper scientists. What, what? Have a look at the things around you. What materials are they made of? Can you think of a reason why those materials were chosen? <laughs> See you soon. Bye. 